Yeah, so the question, the question has to do with, um, with the relationship between thoughts and mind states. And, and these really are so intimately interconnected in our experience. I mean, in some ways, when we take a model like the four categories and we say, okay, this is a mind state, this is a thought, we're having to use thought in order to make these sort of distinctions. And my experience with models is that there's always some way, to, to borrow from my friend David Chapman and his work on meaningness, there's always some way in which our models have, are identifying real patterns. They are patterned. Reality is patterned. We can see patterns. We are uh, pattern-recognizing creatures. But also there's some nebulosity. There's some blurriness. There's, there's ways in which if you kind of get too far into it, you find that these distinctions will break down. And so um, it's, I think it's important and useful to recognize um, that here we're making this distinction and it's meant to be a practical one. So the, so mind states and thoughts are very much related and connected to one another um, in, in this way of looking. Um, oftentimes when we're having thoughts, especially if there's a storyline to the thoughts, we're also at this, almost at the same time or in close concert, we're feeling mind states. Um, you know, you used the example of desire. So that's, I would call that a mind state in this model. But then there could be a kind of, um, fantasizing thought that goes along with the desire, right? It's like we're imagining a future situation that we want to occur. Whatever the object of the fantasy is, we're thinking about it and we're simulating it and we're imagining it. And then we feel this kind of rise of desire, which has a very physical component. There's warmth, there's pleasant sensations, there's tingling, there's all this sort of sensation that rises up. And then you know, we feel that and we could call that desire. And then that desire, the mind state, it's like it fuels the thinking process. It gives energy and it boosts the thought. Um, and, and these things kind of work in a way in concert. I remember living in Colorado. Uh, we lived for a little bit in this apartment right next to the front range uh, where, the, where the mountains kind of jetted up. Uh, we were extremely lucky. And um, there were oftentimes people out there doing this kind of parasailing thing where they'd catch the wind that was coming off of the front range and they'd sort of just like gloop, loop around and glide around and catch the wind and shoot back up for a while. And they would just kind of do this. And we just sit there and watch them all day, you know, most sometimes doing this. And I was like, God, this is just like watching the mind. This is just like watching these mental states pop up, fuel thoughts, kind of spin around in the thoughts for a while and then another gust comes and you just kind of keep going through this process where they, they really do kind of feed one another. And in order to break out of those cycles, you know, assuming we want to, assuming we're not actually harnessing that to get into altered states, um, because that's actually how meditative absorption works too, um, then we actually have to tune into some something that cuts through the thoughts and cuts through the mind state that breaks the solidity up of it. We've got to notice the sensations of the body, for instance, and feel what's actually like in the body enough that the thoughts die down and we can just be there with the sensations. So yeah, it, these things are really connected. And sometimes I find it hard to distinguish myself. Like ex what exactly is the, the line between a thought uh, and for this fourth category and a mind state? Because there, there is so much of, a, of, a, of an overlap. And lately I've been thinking of the four categories almost like a slider you know, like an opacity slider, um, you know, where you're changing, uh, going up and down. It's like, okay, and the bottom is like body and at the top is mind. And every experience has both body and mind. So it's not that you ever, uh, if you get all the way to the top, it's not just purely thought um, because you still have a body, you're still alive. And you get down all the way to the, to the experience of just pure body. It's not pure. We still think. We still have mental imagery. We still you know, there's still some amount of subtle thought that occurs even when we're just being with the body. So to me, I think of it more like that. Like I find it helpful to kind of identify, okay, like where am I on the slider right now? Where is attention? 